Hi there, welcome to my beginner's guide for Stardeus. I'm Icon and this video will cover up everything you need to know to enjoy this game. You will find timestamps in the description box below, which will lead you to the various topics of this video. I hope you're finding your answer there. If not, feel free to drop me a comment and I'll see what I can do. This game is really deep, it's pretty complex, and this video is only going to show you the basic ropes around what you have to uh, do to get yourself started. There's way more about this game. I'm right now working on a tutorial series and as soon as that's done you'll find the link to that in the description box below. You will also find the seed I used for this map so if you want to play along on exactly this map this is the number you need. And before we get started now with the technical details, I also want to point out that without your support, this channel won't work. So check out Patreon, Paypal, and Buy Me a Coffee links in the description box below if you want to be a supporter as well. I want to give a big thanks to all the people who are out there supporting me already. And if you'd checked out these things, I'd be more than happy. So enough about that. Let's get into the game. As you see there, this is our start this thing here is the ship computer this is where the ai which is basically your alter ego is sitting at you're controlling the robots and your job is to make this pile of scrap a spaceship again so you can already see that there was a basic shape once but it blew up entirely you also will find all manner of different parts here in the debris that we will use later on most important there is that here in the center there's a stasis array this is where lots of people are waiting to be um, unfrozen in and they want to be part of your colony again so Altogether, this is where we are going to work ourselves to, and our job is to keep people alive, make the spaceship flyable again, and find a planet to live at. That's the basic premises. So, quick glance over the user interface. Upper right corner, lots of management tools. We have all sorts of grids and, uh, and layouts and whatnots, really a lot of things. We're going to use every single tool of these as I see them fit across the video. I just want to mention that if you're looking for any sort of overview tool, you're mostly going to find, most likely going to find it there. There's also technology, that little flask thingy hidden behind T because you know, T like research. And there's also the quests menu here, which is also really, really useful, which is always a new task for you at the beginning of the game. This can help you a lot to uh, find one step after another. I'm going to explain all the other things up there once it's time for that. I don't want to uh, bloat this at this point with pointless informations. The utmost uh, line is the time meter, pretty useful stuff. Time is controlled by one, two, three, and four and uh, space for pause nothing nothing really unfamiliar here the uh, lower middle here has the building menu or basically it's the building menu and the command menu so you can order things to get hold order things to get repaired order things to get connected build things and whatnot if you right click somewhere you also open up this radial menu which is basically a uh, circlified version of what you got down there so just to want to if you want to go for that you also can access everything in the game by just left clicking it then you get a readout about what it is if you click down here on details and click on the codex entry you get a bit of a description of uh, of sorts also you find the codex of the question marks th mark thing there this is your help menu and i can strongly recommend you to check it out whenever you run into any problems also Clicking something until it's a green bordered like that and right clicking it opens up an interaction menu which has all the interactions available that you can go for in this particular scenario. And that's pretty much the basics. There's only one more thing that I want to showcase. When you press tab, you open up a search prompter and uh, this way you can find everything out of your building menu. For example, if you want to build quickly a floor and you don't want to go through all the menus, Tab, floor, and boom, you got it under your cursor. I'm going to add in a couple of extra helpful little things in between of this video, but that's all I wanted to uh, go over in the basics of the user interface and the controls. Most 
things that uh, you assign will get done automatically by your robots. You can also check out the known beings list here. That's uh, all the people on the map, robots and people. I'm going to go over these things in a, in a minute. So basically you're controlling these robots as the AI that you are and the human beings, well, not so much. Okay, so that's been the basics. Let's get on over to the first topic, which I call building stuff and power. So first of all, we need to get ourselves some power. We have robots, robots live off of power, and we don't have any power generation. So let's get started with that. So click the hammer icon, go over here, and here you have three different things. The first thing is a matter reactor, which is like the name implies a uh, structure for power production. We slap down one of these. Then we're going to build a connector, which is basically a power pole. And we're going to build charge stations. Let's build like two of them, which are basically recharging uh, stations for your robots. And that is all it takes. Our dudes are wheezing off and picking up the materials out of the debris around us, so we don't need to worry about that too much. So, here we go. First things are being completed. And now that we got the, uh, the control tower, we can connect things. So, you click the connector, drag and drop with the left mouse click towards the computer. Now the computer you see is connected to the power grid. We do the same thing now with the generator. So the generator and the power pole are now connected. And we do that also for these thingies down here. And now we have a power grid. Come on, let's connect that thing, which is a battery too. So now the power goes into the power pole and the power pole distributes the power to all the other receivers. Job done. So the next thing that we got to do is to tell our reactor what kind of fuel he's allowed to burn. You click that and here you get to select what the uh, <coughs> generator is supposed to turn into energy. Since we are playing in a sci-fi environment, we can transform steel plates into power, which is amazing and absolutely my thing. So we got all that, and our next quest is going to be to connect ourselves to the stasis array. We have now the very, very basics already set up. We have a power generation, we have a feeding station for the robots, and we have connectors. The next thing that we want to do is we want to make this thing a ship again. So first off, how to do so. To get anything done here will require a connection to the stasis array. That is going to be easier said than done. So as you see there, we can build another connector. We can click that, press B, so we copy the exact item. But as you see there, you see those dots and blots? We cannot connect. It's too far away. So there's two ways what we can do now. We can now either build floor tiles to uh, build new connectors. That would be one thing. So you could just uh, slap down a couple of floor tiles to build a tower in between. Something like that. Or you could uh, also research a winch to uh, drag these parts together. So I'd say we're going to go over the utmost basics of research to show you what, I, uh, what I'm what i talking about. Meanwhile, I'm going to connect in the easier way so you see both methods that you could apply. So press T for the tech tree. So first off, we now are looking for the winch technology. Let's go and make our life easy, press tab, type in winch and that's what we got there. So the winch is going to allow us to uh, move spaceship segments towards each other. That's pretty useful, especially at the point where we're at right now. You see there up in the upper left corner is our um, total amount of resources. We got electricity, disk space and memory. And you see here, that's the total cost. So the winch requires 25 kilowatts over the course of 24 hours. We have 30 kilowatts, all right, we can afford. We require four units of memory, etabytes. These are only going to be required during the research. After the research is done, this memory will be freed up again. So I have eight, I require four, all goodo. The blue stuff here is permanent memory. This is disk space. Once this research is done, we're going to block six of 32 zettabytes of, of, uh, of memory permanently. 
but it's worth it and that's technically how research works. You always have to have enough processing power to actually get the job done. You have to have enough energy to get the job through. As you see here, those technologies have blindly varying energy costs. And you also have to have enough permanent uh, storage to uh, store the technologies. This leads you to the point that you really should consider well what you are going to research because unnecessary researches really are bothering are bothersome and uh, a problem in the long run so we're now building connectors so a bit of a uh, connector bridge as you see there just uh, plotting down one after another so your flying robots have no problem to traverse space here in between these platforms so you really don't have any problems whatsoever we're now connecting these guys together and as you see there, we're building this way sort of an energy bridge, which allows us to uh, support the uh, other area of the ship with power, even though we aren't really connected. So, as you see here, I can connect this. This is a uh, distributor, which has 32 sockets, but a much lower range. And I cannot connect because it's too damaged. As we click that, here you see damage. You can just uh, issue a repair order and that's all it takes if that ever happens to you. If items are too damaged, they cannot be used. You can also, when a tower is completed, right click him to um, reach all the other um, commands there. So right clicking is always opening up a interaction menu that uh, allows you to do things with these, basically. All right, so now I'm connecting all the power over to the stasis array. So that's your first job. And uh, as you see there, there are lots of items around us with electricity icons. These are really, really important. Don't connect the stasis array first because you want to provide an a environment where people can actually survive first. So we connect now to the outwards things first. This is an airlock. We connect to this. This is a vent. We connect to this. This is a door. As you see here, doors are always uh, requiring electricity in this game. And now we connect to everything around there. These tiles on the floor, on the floor, by the way, are light panels. As soon as they have power, they'll be uh, they'll be providing light. So, let's build ourselves another matter reactor, but not on the uh, far side. We're going to go over here, because this is where our base of operations will ultimately be. So, meanwhile, the winch is being researched. As you see there, it takes a while, 24 hours to be exact. Let's wait a moment until the generator is done. So, here the room is now closed, enclosed, and... Uh, here we can now use the other informations. Before you connect the stasis array with power, you want to make sure that this room is uh, well suited for a human being. So let's check it out. So let's click the temperature overlay. And uh, when you mouse over here, uh, you see the temperature is at minus 273 degree. That's a little bit cold, isn't it? So let's go on over to the oxygen. There's also 0% oxygen, not too good. Let's go for the insulation. And this is showing you how well the walls are insulating. And you see here all the breaches that are happening. You, so you see here is a breach, there is a breach, there is a breach, there is a breach. And last but not least, the air tightness. Here you can also see there are breaches here, there, and there. So these are the uh, reasons why there's... Uh, why it's so extremely cold in there and why no, why there's no uh, oxygen and nothing in there. The other thing you might want to look uh, for is items on the ship that you can use. So here, for example, that's a heater. We're going to pick it up and relocate it in there. This is going to be very useful for later. And the other thing we're going to look for in those ruins... Oh, look, we have a uh, reactor here running as well. He's a running uh, heater, but that's what I've been looking for. Here's a oxygen pump. 
let's see. But we're not going to move them away, because as you see here, our human beings in here are cuddling here uh, together and surviving. If I'd be turning off these machines, that would be really bad for them. There's always a handful of people at the very start of the game that are just uh, hanging out in somewhere and surviving. So, there's also always a space suit at the beginner's map, this one. It's uh, highly use useful to uh, relocate that towards your um, people there, so we do that. You see, there's an order for that. But usually, when you look around thoroughly enough, you'll always find another uh, another oxygen pump. So we relocate that thing here as well. So, now we got an oxygen pump and a heater inside there. So basically, we have all the necessary parts for a happy life in there, don't we? So, let's build another connector in there. wait until these things are done and then it's time to connect to power again here we go and now we connect the oh wait a sec so no generator here anyways we're just going to wire these up so connecting to the heater and connecting to the oxygen pump which is too damaged so we repair it first go so now we got a heat source and a oxygen source but we also have to take care of the leaks now here's the deal doors are not per se a problem but they turn into a problem when they open and close but not as worse uh, not as bad as a vent which is opened so first things first if you see these vents close them so they don't leak air outside anymore so here we go and uh, we researched the winch technology, more about that in a second. And now when we, when we go for the insulation again, you see there's a hole and there's a hole. This is because the window and the wall are too damaged. So they need to be repaired as well. And to be really sure that no floor tiles in this room are damaged, you press the repair command and you see here everything red is damaged so i strongly recommend you to assign repair jobs to the entirety inner uh, side of the room because it's really hard to see whether or not um floor tiles are battered up or not so now let's check this out the insulation is uh, there the air tightness is there the oxygen is slowly spreading from here and the temperature is slowly rising from here. Very, very slowly though. Okay, so we can now, we could now connect to the stasis array. But before we do so, I'll show you what it's, uh, what, what's uh, with the winches there. So we're going to build ourselves a winch now, a winch hook for one side and a winch anchor for the other side. And this thing is, is used to bring ship parts together. So here's the deal. When you look up here of uh, the sections menu hidden behind F10, you can see the sections and their sizes. Here you see how many blocks they consist of. Here's the basic rule. The smaller block gets always drawn to the larger block. So if we activate the winch here, it's going to be, it's going to draw this part of the ship closer to this part. So let's do that. You press the uh, winch hook, you press reel in, and then you do this. Confirm. And as we see here, we're now shoving these parts together until they are connected. And that's that. Now we have a uh, direct connector between the parts of the ship. And uh, that's exactly what we wanted to do there. You can now pick up the winch and uh, the hook. As you see there, looking through that a bit more. Below all that debris, I know that there's a winch. Here, the winch hook. You can now relocate that, and I don't know, we could put it down to here, and uh, then there, and then you can proceed like that. And this way, you can, bit by bit, grab yourself the parts of the ship, 
and uh, fix them together. Alternatively, you can also issue the order to deconstruct parts of the ship. This way you can uh, weld things together until it is a ship again. So, once your room looks a bit like that, there's a bit of temperature and there's a bit of oxygen, it looks all pretty decent. Uh, in this situation, by the way, I would first uh, try to winch this part back to this part, so they are all connected. Once that's done, but I won't because I want to finish that tutorial, you can connect this thing here. And once the stasis uh, array is uh, connected, the there will be people hatching out of that thing, so to say. You see here, cryostability is at eighty-one percent, and it is a uh, ever decreasing number. And once it's empty, you uh, you've hatched all the people out there. So that's the very basics. To get yourself further, I'm going to leave you a couple of uh, notes where to go after that. So there is always a next uh, job there to be done. So um, the game always shows you to uh, to where where to go next. So here, connect to the survivor area. That would be um, this area here. So this is the next quest. I would have done that before I connect. You do however you please. The next thing that I want to talk about is how to make this thing a spaceship again. It's really, really simple. That's why I want to summarize it so easily. First off, you need to have thrusters. These can be just relocated and uh, clapped onto the uh, on, on whatever part of your ship. And then the next thing you need to do is go on over to the... Uh, ship controls tell the ship which is the forward direction in this scenario i would say east which is right and uh, then you have to uh, close out all these things here and um, most importantly here we ship not in one piece that's the biggest problem so you have to bring these pieces together and then you'll have to research the space travel technology, build a bridge controls, and uh, basically this is your checklist. Do all these things and you get to fly around. And uh, once you have ship a bridge controls, you get also access to the star map. And once you have access to the star map, you can fly around, acquire resources, and uh, and so on and so forth. So that's the utmost basics. I want to go over a couple of things that will be helpful for you. Your environment here is full of items that you can grab, use, and uh, get yourself forward with that. There's lots of uh, items that you want to have. For example, a loom. The disassembler here, for example, transforms destroyed um, robots into material. There's lots of robots lying around here. The crafting station helps you to process materials into something more useful before you are even able to build one. There's solar panels lying around that you can use for power generation. There's lots of batteries lying around. There's really a lot of things that you should put to good use. The items distributed on the starter ship are always the same and uh, therefore I, I see no difference between these at least therefore put them to good use and uh, relocate as you see fit i want to go over a couple of technologies before i head on over to the end of the video which i personally find extremely important and worth noting out so first off when you do quests, you get technologies unlocked. So do quests. Quests are really good because they, they really help you um, to get uh, further. The first thing that I want to showcase here is the uh, computing technology, which allows you to build disk modules and memory modules. This is the technology you require to research more technology so don't lock yourself out and get make sure that you get computing as quick as possible but don't you worry computing is part of the rewards of the of the quests automatically another really important technology beyond that then is biotech you get that for free though as well alongside of the quests which unlocks the cooking station which allows you to cook for survival meals out of protein, which is extremely valuable. Also unlocks the planters, which allows you to get food. 
And after that, I strongly suggest you to uh, research towards things like recycling and nutrient extraction and vegetarian food. Once you have these three technologies, you have access to pretty much all you need to keep your people sustained food-wise. The next thing that I want to go over is uh, the... Let's uh, check it out. Advanced energy is useful because it unlocks extra connectors and makes it much easier to uh, distribute your power, but it requires 12 uh, by 12 etabytes of memory, so it's a little bit harder to research. Nevertheless, a very valuable tech. But I want to go for resource processing, manufacturing, and from this point on also smelting. These three technologies are what you require to be sustainable material-wise. Resource processing opens up the grinder, which allows you to transform rocks into uh, minerals. The disassembler, yeah, well, you have one to begin with, and smelting opens up the furnace, which transforms ores into metal. Then manufacturing opens up the production of very, very important items. Every one of these will be required. Microchips, optical fibers, gears, and uh, battery cells will be required for the construction of various, various important things. Don't uh, delay that tech too far. And last but not least, there is also the um, teleporter technology, which you get for free. But uh, there is also economy, which leads to... Oh, wait a sec. No, I don't know how it's called again. There is uh, here, communications, exactly. Communications opens up the communicator, and once you have the communicator and the teleporter, you can summon traders, which allows you to sell your produced goods and buy whatever you need. And once you have these things together, you are technically able to survive for an indefinite amount of time. I want to uh, put a last finger here towards advanced computing, which is a really, really tasty technology, which I would strongly recommend you to, uh, to rush as quick as possible. It's pretty costly, lots of uh, storage power, lots of processing power, lots of energy. I mean, 300 kilowatt or a lot in the early game, but it allows you to build disk modules, which are much more efficient than the uh, starter ones. Here you have 8 zettabytes on the grid, here you have 24 zettabytes on the grid, that's triple the amount, and uh, lots of other goodies. Alright, but I don't want to bloat it there, I think I already left you with a lot of ideas, and that is the end of this tutorial. I hope you found that quite helpful. Feel free to leave me a comment, a thumbs up would be also appreciated, or just subscribe to the channel if you like that content. There's daily stuff coming up from my side. Just do the notification thing and you'll stay notified of whatever I'll do in the future. Also, like I said, check out the description box and the various links there. I'd be really, really happy if you did so. Have a nice day, have fun with Stardeus, and see you soon, I hope.